the uh, culmination of this course that you know you want to do something that you'll actually use in the real world, go to GoDaddy and just pay for hosting. And I'm going to show you a few different options here to make sure you understand what you're getting. I'm recommending GoDaddy because they are the easiest to use. If anything goes wrong, you call the 1-800 number. It's, it's super simple to get in touch with them. They don't, they don't have a posted right there, but as soon as you set up an account, the 1-800 number is everywhere. In fact, in the middle of the setup, it would be available. So go to GoDaddy.com. If you actually want to do this, you can do this with me right now as I'm going through it. Um, once you get there, go to hosting. Don't worry about the domain for a second. Just go to hosting. And when you click on hosting, it'll say web hosting and WordPress hosting. It always says on sale, by the way, all the time. Because everything on GoDaddy is always on sale. It's like when you walk into a store and something says $5.99 and nobody looks at it. As soon as it says on sale $5.99, everybody's all of a sudden attracted to the same exact thing. So it's always on sale. I know it would make sense because we are in a course where we are learning to use WordPress as our primary platform for designing a website, but it, we're not going to go to WordPress hosting. WordPress hosting doesn't give you access to the cPanel, the control panel, which will allow you to go into PHP My Admin, export the database, make new databases, that kind of stuff. Okay, the WordPress hosting version of this is just, you just set it up and then you just go right to WordPress. Okay, so it's, it's a little harder to do the things you need to do at the end of my course, and technically, it's actually not really cheaper. I like what GoDaddy's doing here. I think it's smart because, yes, $3.99 a month, um, and this is American, by the way, so my I don't know why my computer hasn't automatically realized I'm in Canada, but $3.99 a month seems cheaper, uh, but you could only get it for $3.99 a month if you do it for a whole year. Um, I can get you down pretty cheap for three months on the web hosting, so just, and this may change by the time you're watching this video. What I don't want you guys to do is just don't do WordPress hosting. Go here and just do standard web hosting and get cPanel hosting. So cPanel hosting now is automatic. But get out of here, man. With any of their plans, all of these come with access to the control panel. If you scroll down, they talk about it. So up until last year, they were still offering these standard Linux hosting plans where you didn't have the cPanel access. And it was kind of annoying because it didn't look very standard. But if you go down here, it'll tell you like um, you get live help, cPanel access, you can get into the cloud if you want. There's a lot of stuff you won't need here, but it's not very much. So economy hosting only allows you to have one website, but if you have the account set up and you want to upgrade later, you can do that. So if you're doing this for the purpose of my course, and you're not 100% sure where you're gonna where you're gonna take it, right, or how you're gonna do it, I would do the economy hosting. Okay, so add that to your cart and then it'll show up in your cart as $6.99 a month. It'll give you the option to do only three months, which is 20 bucks, okay? And that's US, so it's a little more than that Canadian. Um, I, man, the last hour when I did this, it automatically converted to Canadian prices. It's annoying it's not doing that. So that's in the cart, okay? You can go down here and just ignore all this stuff it wants you to add on. You don't need any of this stuff. Just do the plan the minimal plan for 20 bucks, and now you're going to need a domain. And I did do this last hour, so it's got two in there, so I'm gonna get rid of this. If you accidentally put extra stuff in your cart, just go and click remove, okay? You don't need the search engine visibility, but you do probably need a domain. So what I would recommend here then is if you don't know for sure what domain you want, which will probably cost you around 10 to 12 bucks to get a .com or .ca, Come up with just some nonsense domain and buy a .info and you should be able to get it for less than five bucks. And then for barely 30 bucks Canadian, you're set up on GoDaddy for the rest of the semester. So, and this is purely optional guys. This is not gonna affect your mark in this course. I told you at the beginning, there are no required resources that will cost you money. I still stand by that. But this will set you up in GoDaddy, and then if you want to keep going, you want to keep the website online, you can extend your account. And if you want to do, if you know you're going to have this up for like a year, then don't do the three months. Do the full year and get it for way less each month. Okay, I'm just recommending the three months if you're not sure. If you're, if you're going to do it for a year for sure, I would go back and pay for the year instead. It's a better deal if you know you're going to do a year anyway. So let's say I wanted to do like, um, like, Mike Sloan 5062 demo or Mike Sloan 5062 project. Like 
make a make a silly long domain that doesn't really make any sense if you're not sure if you're going to do this because you do need a domain for this to work and then um, see how much the dot info would cost okay now when you hit go it's going to automatically try and add all this junk to your cart so you can get all three of these for a year for 18 bucks we don't need that we just want the dot info put it in there now be very careful once you add it into the cart I, GoDaddy is so good about this stuff. They're going to try and get it set up. They're going to not have it in there for a year, right? They're going to just try and make you pay. So $2.99, okay? There you go. And which makes no sense because two years with the, with the same dot info was like 12 something dollars. So watch out for GoDaddy. You always got to be careful with them. And I, I hope they're not offended if they see this video because I did ask them to sponsor this course and they totally blew me off. Um, but this is what I want you guys to do and then you're set up you have your own account there was an option that I had put on the table to, to still keep this we had a, we have a Fanshawe hosting account with GoDaddy that we do some different stuff in and I just I shut it all down because I didn't you know as soon as I do that then at the end of the term I'm gonna have to migrate every one of the websites for the students that want to keep them to their own accounts it would just be a nightmare it's not that hard to migrate a couple sites here and there but I don't want to do like 80 of them um, so stop coming up. Why does it keep doing that? So, so there is $24 US uh, for three months of hosting with cPanel access and a domain for a year. And that's going to come, I think that'll come to even less than 30 bucks Canadian. So that's what I would want you guys to do. So you would be a new customer. You continue, set up your account, and they will take debit, not just credit cards. They'll actually take debit and PayPal as well. I have a student volunteer here that agreed to let me go into his account and show you guys what it looks like once you get it set up. So once you get it set up in GoDaddy, if you're already signed in, you'll go to your account page. If you haven't signed in or you need to sign in again, just go and sign in. Okay, so as soon as you get signed in to GoDaddy, and this is how you would typically access your stuff, it may not take you to your account page, okay? It might take you to just the GoDaddy homepage. Here, this is what the GoDaddy homepage looks like. So it may take you here. So first things first, don't talk to the people. Just go to my account, okay? If it didn't take you there already. Then click on web hosting. Now, because you just set it up and you just got a domain and you have one domain and one hosting account, you need to make that connection now. So when you go to web hosting and you click on web hosting and it will ask you to set it up. You gotta click on set up and then it should prompt you with the only domain you have to be the domain. Um, if it doesn't, you type in the domain that you knew that you know you got, and it will set that up as the main domain. Okay, and then you create a username and password for your cPanel, which can be the same as your GoDaddy account username and password. Okay, so I'm going to pause this right now so you guys don't have to watch this. And. Okay, so as long as the password's green, you've accomplished what they require for their password criteria, and you would then click uh, finish. Okay, nope, they still want something else. Uh, um, do you have spaces in front of this? What's this? Um, oh, here, there's criteria for this. So here, fix this. We're gonna do something different. So, and I should have noticed that because it was red. So it, you might not be able to use the same username. You might have to do something a little different. There you go. Okay, so once that's set up and you've connected to the domain, and again, it may not auto-populate this for, for you. If you have a .info, you might have to type it in and then it'll go green. You hit finish and you're in the control panel that I show you in the video. So from that point forward, now everything I show you in the video in terms of setup should be the same, but I'm still gonna have this student set up his WordPress in here as well. Um, okay, so it's setting up the account. This takes maybe like 30 seconds, so I'll just pause here. Okay, so that only took about 15. As soon as you see this pop up in the bottom where it says your account is set up, it finished early, get started, you don't have to keep watching their little setup video. Just click get started. And from there, you'll be in the control panel that I've shown you before in GoDaddy. And you can go directly down to web applications, click on WordPress, click install. Okay, and then set your parameters in here. If it auto-completes to put this in the blog, just remove that because you're just probably going to use the main domain. 
you leave all this stuff the same and then you go and fix these settings. So username, password, email, and then if you're ready to, you can change the title and tagline now, but you don't have to at this point. So I'm gonna have my student do that. Okay, cool, so my student's got the information in there. Make sure your, uh, your email's right. I would advise saving your username and password in a text file somewhere because when you turn in your file, final project, I am going to need that and you may forget it and you're going to need it too, so I would definitely do that. Um, as soon as you fix just those fields, you click install. And again, this takes maybe 30 seconds. I'm gonna actually let the video play out while it's doing it to show you how quickly this happens. Because once this happens and the bar here is done installing, you're ready. You, you, don't, you didn't have to do the WP config thing. You didn't have to go and create the database. It's doing all that for you in the background as I'm speaking to you. And once it's done, it's good to go. Now, I've already seen a couple students that bought .infos so they could make them cheaper. They have .infos, and when they click here, they're not working right away. I think the .info takes a little longer to, um, to kick in. It might take a period of hours. So if that happens to you and you're trying to get your assignment in the Dropbox from this week, you could just put in this screenshot to show me that you did this with the GoDaddy method. But um, if you got a .com like this particular student did, it should work right away. And when you're ready to log in, just like we did in class, you go to wp-login.php and you're ready to log in. Okay, now I'm gonna kick back into the other portion of my video and continue showing you through the control panel. So it's that simple, guys. It really is, it's that simple. Okay, and from as well from the control panel, when I say that I want you to submit an export of the database, you can go to PHP My Admin from the GoDaddy control panel. Here, look up here, look at this. And when you go there, it takes a minute to redirect, but once you get in there, it looks exactly like XAMPP. You click on databases, you will only have one database, likely, if you're doing this in my class. It will not have a name that makes any sense, uh, but because you only have one, you'll click on the database, you'll hit export and you've exported the database for your final project just like the other guys would in XAMPP. Now if you have a bunch of databases and a bunch of WordPress sites, um, they will be named in the order that you created them. So I know approximately when I made what and what these are, but if you're not sure which is which, you can always just click into the database and go to, um, go to WordPress options and it'll show you right right away which which domain this is at, and then you know which database that is. So it's not like you can't figure it out. But you guys only have one, so it should be really easy. So that's the process if you're gonna go remote. So now in this video, I've shown you both. Your job is to figure out which one you wanna do and set up your WordPress installation, and that's where you should be working from now on. You don't have to be in the WordPress demo site. I, I, I'd say leave it in there, just in case you did something in there that you wanna go back and check out. But from this point forward, like when we get into categories and blogs in the next lecture, um, sorry, categories and tags for blog posts in the next lecture, you should be testing this stuff out in your actual final project site. Why not, right? So get it set up. It should only, whichever option you're choosing, I know this video now is probably at about 20 minutes, but whichever option you're choosing, it should really only take you guys about five to seven minutes to get it set up. And it's done and you've started your final project. Why this took some of you, like, over an hour on the test, I'll tell you why. Because you were probably doing other things while I was showing you that 10 times over again and then you didn't use that test prep lecture video. Or for you guys on Friday, it was because you got so stressed because of what happened with FOL and I took care of you because of that. But it is, it is that simple and if you go with the remote host, it's even easier. And you still have access to the same PHP My Admin dashboard. Okay, so so that's what I want you guys to do before the next lecture. And then in the next lecture, you'll have a really small assignment where you take a screenshot to show me which path you've chosen by going and doing this. You'll either go to um, localhost-wordpress slash your new root directory and show me the home page, or you'll go to the domain and show me the home page just to show me which path you've chosen.